Welcome to another episode of Growth Marketers Podcast. I'm Solomon Timothy. And I'm Taylor Rowe. Uh, today's episode was fun. Uh, we talked about uh, SEO metrics and, and what you should be tracking as marketers, um, as SEO experts, um, how it, whether you're trying to track your progress uh, for your own website, you're trying to uh, show your value and kind of show the progress back to you know management or ownership, uh, or you're an agency and you're trying to show this uh, the progress to your client. Uh, I think it's important to understand what metrics are really important and and what metrics uh, are just sort of vanity metrics. So uh, that's what we talked about today and uh, hopefully enjoy. Today we're talking about SEO metrics. Um, So Solomon, whenever you run any sort of campaign, you know, digital marketing campaign, you want to look at some sort of micro KPIs and sort of macro KPIs, right? So whenever you're working on an SEO campaign for your, for our own websites, for our clients, what do you suggest as some main metrics that you can track that would indicate uh, a successful campaign? I mean, I would start with, you know, everything that's available for free. You know what I mean? Like, so any, anyone can do it and be able to do that. So Google Analytics gives you a lot of information, right? They give you organic traffic month over month, year over year. So at least you know if that trend is going up or the trend is going down before you get into anything page level or domain level and all of those, you know, jargons that uh, you hear SEOs talk about. And just start with what you can get for free and then build on to that. So once you know that you're generating traffic organically, Mm -hmm. And you can even see that is a Bing traffic, is a Google traffic, right? Yeah. Most mostly it would be Google. So what about before that? I mean, what if, um, you know, what if we're starting from scratch, right? And it's uh, you're trying to optimize a website, you're building a website, and then you're going to do SEO. Um, you know, there's a lot of worry that it's all behind the scenes, and I'm not going to know for six months or twelve months if I'm even seeing kind of a, an ROI, right? So if it's going to take six months to see an increase in traffic. For example, that's what my SEO company is telling me. Uh, how do I track the progress until then? Or what metric should I be tracking? I mean, uh, again, if you can just think about, you can use rankings as a, as a means, but that's not going to change overnight. Mm-hmm. So you can see if you started with zero visits, are we getting any progress, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe we have 10 visitors. Right. That would be just get visitors sure. to, to the website. Because chances are maybe you don't have any domain authority or page authority or trust flow or right, right. some of the metrics that people hear um, or taking a look at, am I growing right in, uh, in the number of links that I actually have if you want to go that route. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I see a lot of companies kind of get too into the weeds with some of those metrics that Agreed. you mentioned, domain authority, trust flow, citation flow, you know, page rank, all those sorts of things. Right. Correct. So, Uh, And then you get the other side of it, like you're saying, do we look at backlinks? Do we look at keyword rankings? You know, why when I use SEMrush, my keyword says I rank here. When I Google at home, it says here. And I use Ahrefs and it says here. And then I'm also using Moz and all these different tools have different results. Uh, And I just, you know, I'm confused. So I get frustrated and I don't I don't trust you guys. Right. So that can happen. and, And I think we should kind of unpack a little bit more about each of those sort of SEO metrics that the industry is the one that coined these different phrases. So uh, are they reliable? Do we use them? And most importantly, is that the end all be all of, you know, metrics? If I'm trying to get more traffic, should I worry about my domain authority? And what does that really mean? So I guess the the one metric that we all look at is sales. Yeah, yeah, I agree. (laughs) And any business owner will be able to tell, did I get more sales or did I not before we can dive deeper and say, hey, what's trending and, you know, how do we get the sales that we really want? So let's establish that that's the underlining real metric that anybody should look at. And it's not easy to measure that if you're, you know, looking for leads and you don't really know, but you can track how the lead was generated. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the you're right, the. The easiest scenario is, you know, a website that already has traffic and is, let's say, in e-commerce just for the sake of this example, because you can go in your Google Analytics, your Correct. e-commerce system and just say, hey, you know, last month I did $10,000 in sales via organic search. This month I did $12,000, you know, next month we're on track to do whatever. You can see that progress. That's like you said, that's what 
most business owners, that's what most, most marketers should care about is leads, sales, revenue. Um, before you get to that point, obviously you have to drive traffic. And then before you get to the traffic, that's where I think people get, maybe it's antsy or like I said, get lost in the weeds and some of these other metrics um, that again, you know, Google doesn't come out and say, here's the you know secret recipe, right? They do give you kind of some guidelines, rules, regulations. They give you all the different factors that they're checking. Over They'll tell you what not to do. Exactly. Uh, but they don't give you the exact recipe of, of how to make that, right? So um, let's look at these, a couple of them, right? So domain authority is a, a perfect example because I think for one, it's uh, Moz kind of coined the term. Moz is sort of a, an industry leader when it comes to SEO and they've coined that. And I think the best thing that they did is just the name domain Correct. authority. It's It's easy to say, it makes sense. It describes exactly what you're trying to do which is become an authority in the space. You want to be a credible resource. What happens is people use that domain authority as, I have a higher domain authority. Why don't I outrank you, right? Or all I have to do is get other high DA websites to link to me, and then I'm going to steal that DA. If I get 240 links, then I'm going to be a 40, and then that means I'm going to outrank my competitor who's a 39. That's just not how it works that's it's a very simplistic way to look at it it's a it's a sort of a metric that says yeah you're heading in the right direction but that doesn't tell you exactly what you need to do or what you've done so and Moz doesn't update that regularly right correct. it's not being updated like daily well that's yeah i think so, that's probably my biggest issue with domain authority and there's a lot of you know one question that people ask all the time is i started working with this seo company and my domain authority went down or it's gone up but my rankings are going down or you know when you talk about backlinks, right? I only want backlinks from high domain authority websites. When it's not really what Google is looking at, Google's never explicitly said we want domain authority. Google had their own metric, which was called PageRank, which right. they themselves got rid of because people they were said hung up on it. It was too simplistic, and Correct. you guys are you guys are freaking out over this metric that is you know, it was just meant to be helpful. It went the opposite way, so we got rid of it, and people still worry about it and they still worry about the same way with with domain authority so my biggest issue is just like you mentioned it's simplistic it's you know a couple of maybe 40 different um, variables or data points that they're looking at backlinks Com- being the main thing exactly compared to <laughs> 200 or more and it's the way that they get those so like you said it's you know let's say it's a static algorithm i don't know exactly how the domain authority algorithm works but compared to google who has been developing search engines since the 90s and has, you know, AI and it's right. changing every day of all these different touch points. It's a far superior system. You can't take that and replicate it and say, okay, this is exactly what right. this Google's doing, right? You can't predict how Google's algorithms work. And Google is progressively and, you know, ever evolving to focus on showing more relevant results. And sure. domain authority has nothing to do with relevance, right? When we look at it, like you said, it's all about the volume and number of other backlinks that are linking to it. So I would focus more on the relevance of those links. If I'm trying to get improve my rankings, I want it contextual links that are relevant to my audience and to my traffic. I don't care if it's a DA12 or a DA20 right. or a DA50 because... If it's relevant, it's useful. Exactly. And and the biggest thing that's happening because people are so concerned about backlinks and DA, they're skewing the metrics. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's so, the other biggest issue. So why would I even system. care? Yeah. Yes. Why would I even care? It doesn't help me with my own rankings right. or getting traffic. I couldn't care less what DA did. Right. I never look at it. Right. right? If, we, if somebody asks me, well, what DA is that backlink? Yes, perhaps you can use the tool to kind of get some idea on it. Right. But SEOs know how to tweak that. And that's the thing. You have to follow, you know, kind of follow follow <laughs> the money, right? It's, if you figure out somebody's getting paid to get you high domain authority backlinks, right? Uh, and they realize that they can get more from you and it's mm-hmm. more valuable to you for a higher domain authority, they're going to figure out how to fudge Correct. the numbers, right? And make that look better than it really is. Because it's a lot of work to get real relevant Correct. traffic from an audience that makes sense. That's why you're doing this whole SEO thing. So right. if... They're going to take the shortcut and make inflate those numbers, and then they're going to say, "Hey, this is a really valuable link because the domain authority seventy five, and you might believe it if that's what you think the metric, is going to, right? Yeah, you think and that the metric and, and I think that's how a lot of people 
get caught up in the wrong metrics and then they measure the wrong things and then they report on the wrong things and never the thing that they should really care about. Yeah. Right. So, and you know, you, this happens all the time, right? We, you might, we talk to a client or a prospect who's saying, oh, well, here's my reports. Look how beautiful it is because they're measuring all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so what, um, what should we measure? Right. So we both agree on sales. Agreed. And from there, you know, lead traffic, Right? Am I generating organic, organic traffic? Real organic you can't fake traffic, that. Valuable organic traffic. Correct. So I like to look at the pages that are driving traffic, the traffic. And then I like to look at conversely which what those pages are actually ranking for. Because if you track those two things, just like we were saying, keyword rankings alone don't tell the whole story. Traffic alone doesn't tell the whole story. But if I look at my individual page performance in terms of organic traffic, the right. source they're finding me. And then I look at that page and I can see exactly what keywords I'm ranking for on that page and what position are driving that, which combination of uh, different tools in terms mm -hmm. of keyword rankings. You can use Google Search Console. Again, right. free tools essentially that you could use. Uh, even if you just use Google Analytics and Google Search Console and you could come to the conclusion of, hey, this is what people are searching to find this page and I can see how much traffic I get on each of these pages then you can deduce from there, is this relevant traffic or not? Right. So I would focus on, say, before you get sales, how do you get sales, right? You get relevant traffic to your website. So focus on whatever KPIs and metrics are going to lead to your end goal and result, which is revenue. So not worried about page rank and domain right. authority and all these Trust vanity flow, metrics. Citation that, flow. That don't result. They could. I mean, they, they, they're all meant for with good intention, right? People right. created that so you could have some sort of measuring stick along the way. But like you said, people manipulate the data and people get too caught up on the data. So you start backwards from your end goal and just kind of work down from there. And then as long as you're meeting all of those requirements that you know believe, will lead to that end goal, then you're heading in the right direction. So if you're improving your keyword rankings for that relevant and valuable content that you believe is going to convert into paying customers, doesn't matter what all the other metrics say. If you're improving in that direction, then you're heading the right way. And and you could use that when you're benchmarking against yours to some competitors because you don't have access to all the keyword rankings. You don't have access right. to their analytics. You don't have access to all the backlink information, whatever it might be. So you can use whatever the tool makes, like you know, right. Majestic has the trust, trust flow and yeah. citation and flow I, and so on. I do. So I on. think that you can and you should. And I think that... As SEOs, it's it's difficult to explain all of this to a client if they don't fully understand what's happening. But I think the the risk is that you explain that to them, like, look, these guys have our competitors have a, a much higher, you know, like you said, trust flow, citation flow than we do. And they say, Okay, great. Let's work on improving that. How do we improve that? And you say, Look, we need to get high quality, industry relevant websites, publications, right. directories to link back to us. Um, that's going to improve our authority, right? Or our trust flow, citation flow. So then we all agree on that. You go out, you do that. And that's where you get, again, too much into the weeds when they say, well, you know, these links that you're getting aren't as high of domain authority. How is that going to improve our authority? Or you do that part and you surpass your competitors and you do all these backlinks and you're higher than your competition in terms of those metrics, uh, but your keyword rankings aren't higher. Your traffic isn't higher. So that's my only concern with just looking at that. I think it's a, a good way to explain to the client as long as you elaborate on that and say, look. Education, you, right? Exactly. Right. Even if this doesn't, just because we're so far behind or that we're ahead or whatever, it's not the whole story. This is a good metric to help us understand the overall health and credibility of our website. Um, but there's other factors that go into that, um, even factors that Google's looking at, like domain age and those sorts right. of things that are not, how long this website's exactly. been around? Right. Referral domain names, right? right. Um, what do you think about looking at backlink metrics? The current site that you are trying to optimize to the people that are on the first page. Again, it's not easy as it sounds to get on the first page. Otherwise, everybody would have, everyone would have done it, right? Mm -hmm. So what other metrics outside of, again, traffic? Because, again, for Google back, looks... For backlinks, you're saying? Right. Should we um, be looking at that to compare us versus them? Yes, I think you should. Um, I think you should when you assess the, um, I guess, how realistic an opportunity would be for one. I mean, like you said, if you look at the keyword you're trying to rank for and you look at the keywords uh, or the, the people rather who are ranking on page one, 
uh, and just briefly look and say, okay, these these websites, these first three listings have combined 300,000 links to them. Um, and I have three or 10. How realistic is yeah, it? How realistic is it for me to rank for that same keyword? So when I look at it in terms of level of competition, just to see if you're in the same ballpark. Um, but I like to dive into it deeper and say, okay, they, they have good domain authority or whatever the number is. Why is that? Those same tools that you're using will allow you to individually look at every single one of those backlinks, see where they're getting them from. You can filter by those same metrics to see what is the most valuable to them uh, and what's driving traffic for them. And I would look and see, are they are those industry publications or directories? Um, are they other websites that you could get mentioned on? Is there sponsorship opportunities? A lot of times they'll kind of lay out that roadmap or that blueprint for you if you can kind of look at that. So not so much the numbers, but what's behind the numbers, what's leading to those numbers. So right. again, you don't focus on manipulating your number to be as good as theirs, but you look at it and just have to use your own sort of common sense to say of these backlinks, which ones are going to be relevant for my audience. And and you can easily export that out. Look at right. site by every single one of those things, depending on how many hours you want to spend on this right exercise. A lot. Look through them and find the ones that I want to build a relationship with. You might not do it in the first month. You may not do it in the second month. But you at least have your, your work cut out for as many months and years as it's going to take to build that backlink profile, right? The authority. That's the stuff that is not scalable, but that's effective. Yeah. So I think we've um, kind of covered all of the domain metrics, but there's a lot of other SEO metrics that I know we get asked about. So um, how do you feel about some of these other ones? So you're, you're investing in SEO, you're doing all these things, your authority, so to speak, is improving and your rankings start to improve. But then there's these other metrics, right? So click through rate and the bounce rate and your time on site and number of pages they're looking at, all those sort of things. What is important to Google? What's important to you as a marketer? Uh, and how do you explain this to you know a client or uh, an internal team of hey we're getting more traffic but our bounce rate is you know going up or it's going down w what important what metrics do you look at at that scale once they're starting to get the traffic right so first of all if you're doing you know a really good job in creating content and building a website that users are going to love chances are they're not going to bounce mm -hmm. right there's going to be long form content you've done a really good job organizing it in a manner that it's meant to have time on site. Sure. If you're seeing that the time on site is really low, if you're seeing that the bounce rate is really high, I would look at the what the page and say, hey, yeah, have I added enough value for a user to stick around for longer than a minute? Right. You know, uh, that would be the first thing to do. Now, if you're having 90% or 80% bounce rate, there's a lot of things that need to be reworked mm -hmm. because like I, like I said, you might be ranking for a keyword now, but chances are that's going to go away because Google sees that information as very low engagement on your page and immediately they'll yeah. probably de rank you know, lower yeah. your rank to be way lower on the page or three, four or five. Sure. Yeah. So I think, um, I mean, I agree with you on the time on site part. I think I would worry about that metric more because again, it's, it's all about user experience, right? That's whole Google's that whole is thing. It. The reason that they show all these crazy different types of search results, the reason they're showing the knowledge box showing up that has the answer to the question you were searching is so that you have the best user experience possible. You don't even have to click on the link. Don't have to go anywhere. Give you the whole website preloaded right here and specifically the part that you were looking for. Um, so the time on site to me is probably more important than the bounce rate. It depends on the search, right? So if it's a buyer intent related search, bounce rate is bad because you're trying to get people to make a purchase right. decision or click through to other pages on your website. But if it's a research related top of the funnel search, the opposite supposedly would happen, right? Because theoretically, you did such a great job answering their question. They clicked on it. They read the answer, got the information they needed, and they left. So I believe that Google is smart enough to differentiate those two types of searches and the type of content that you have. And I think time on site is a bigger indicator than bounce rate because that's still a bounce, right? If I Go, like you said, I do a search, it's a long form content, and I read that for five minutes, and then I leave, it's technically a bounce because right. I didn't go to any other pages, pages, but I spend five minutes on the website. So Google knows that, right? and Google knows what type of search I was and what other similar behaviors people are having. Did they click on the first link? 
and they bounced after one second and then they clicked on my link and they stayed there for five minutes and then bounced and they didn't do another search. I think that has to have play a factor right. in, in their search and results. First of all, if you can get them to click on your page on the search results, right. just getting the click through rate, I guess that's the part, right? The it's click through pre, rate, I think, yeah. pre even bounce rate, pre yeah. right, right. Uh, time on site, getting them to click is half the battle. So where, where do people go to measure that? Because that's kind of less talked about when it comes to these SEO metrics. Right. There's no, you know, Ahrefs metric for click-through rate. So wh where do people go to find that? Search Console. How do you measure that? And then how do you influence that? Correct. So um, great question. This is what we do day in and day out, right? We're looking at that very metric. So Search Console will be the best place to go find this information. How many times your page or keyword, you had the impression, but not right. the click. Right. If they don't click, you'll never get that information in analytics. Google Analytics is not to tell you what happened on search results. Right. It's only what happened on your website. So right. Search Console is the best plot to get that information. And what you can do to influence it is what is the title tag that they're clicking on? What does that headline say in search results? Like what does it say in blue? Mm -hmm. And what is that description, right? That yeah, they're the right, the meta description. What does that say about what is it that they're looking for? The more relevant that you can make it, Right. So if you can have a page that specifically talks about the keyword that they're looking for, they're more likely to click on it because it answers the question that they were searching. If you're talking about something completely broad, then they may not click on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you might still rank for it because Google might think you're relevant. But the title tag and the meta description is a huge factor in whether or not I'm going to click on it. Sure. The more enticing you can make it. Right. Yep. You know, we've seen that lists works. Yep. Ten things, seven <clears throat> things, eight things, what you want to do, what right. you don't want to do. Best. The best, right? So those things work because people are curious to know 14 things. Well, I'd rather do read 14 than seven. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so it's better for me. Exactly. So that's actually where some of those, you know, more traditional marketing tactics are, you know, overlooked a lot of times, right? You think of SEO as a, a technical trade. Right. And uh, it's not know, a it's creative like, job. Right. And then you get something <laughs> like that. And it's like, well, it just as you mentioned, those creative titles of blog posts, Correct. the creative meta descriptions. Um, at the end of the day, there that's a whole industry. When you talk about Google AdWords, it's important in your AdWords. Right. It's that's your billboard, right? You you want to use all the different call extensions right. and all these different Site, things. Every links. character that you have, exactly. Location. Right. <laughs> We're gonna name every single yeah. one of them here. You would use emojis if you could, right? Right. If you can, that would be increases click through rates. <laughs> exactly. Rains. So that's the thing. Is like, it's the same product. It's Google. Yeah. But for whatever reason. Those methodologies are, well, that doesn't, it only matters for AdWords, it doesn't matter for SEO. But in reality is you can do all of these things that we're talking about, create the content, optimize it, make sure you have extremely fast loading website, internal linking structure, clear prioritization of the pages, what's supposed to show up where. Um, we have the backlinks and we have the credibility and the relevance. So we've done everything that we can and we finally get to page one. That's where Google has to kind of make the determination of what what's better than the other. And we were talking about a search that has millions of results, right? And you're in the top ten. That click through rate is going to have a big impact on where you rank because again, Google wants to show the results that people want to see. And so, if the majority of people click on something, they're going to continue to move that up to the top. Uh, again, those other factors, time on site, bounce rate, are going to come into play once they're on the website. Um, but that's where you see, you know, something's going to bounce between position three or four or two or one. Um, it's going to kind of jockey back and forth because Google is always trying to figure out what's what the, the people want. Right. And you need to, that's, you know, that's kind of the, the you made it to the finish line and you need to continue to, to focus on that. And so that's where people always ask, well, once I get to the first page, what do I need to do anything else? I mean, that's like, you know, you're at the finish line and, okay, we made it. We're done. We don't need to do anything else. Right. Wipe our hands clean. That's crunch time, right? That's when you're finally at the top. You need to focus because once you get to those top three positions, the statistics show that, you know, the high percentage, the majority of the clicks are going to be in position one, right. two, and three. Not even, you're talking very, very minimal at the bottom, you know, bottom I half of page. Even page one. So if that's such a high ranking factor, it's almost like a snowball effect. Once you get to position one, you got to do something crazy to kind of lose that position, right? So it's so hard to get there. And then it's going to be so hard to knock somebody off. And if you don't stay at the top of your game and if you let your guard down, then it's going to be even harder to get back there, right? Right. And and also 
you have to think about how you got there so you right. can have other pages have the same right. effect. That's Google already page, likes yeah. you, mm -hmm. right? That's how I look at it. Yep. You've already made it to this page. How do I do this for other pages? How am I, you know, there are struggling pages. There's a lot of things that you can do. Yeah. And do you think that has an impact on your other pages? So like, let's say, for example, you you do a great job for all these long, long form, right. long, -tail, uh, long keywords. tail keyword searches, research related searches that are somewhat related to your product or service that you're selling, but not not directly, not generating really any traffic revenue from that traffic, at least initially, right? They're going there, they're reading, they're clicking through, and then they're they're leaving. Do you think that if I have a hundred long tail search terms that I rank for on page one and people, everybody that goes to my website has a great user experience, they click through, go to a bunch of pages, spend 10 minutes on my website, right? Theoretically, do you think ranking for those sort of ancillary keywords would then show Google that some of these other more difficult keywords you should move up in the rankings because this website in general provides a great user experience. Right. So the way that I've seen websites rank is that once you start to rank higher on some of the pages, you're improving the whole website's health, yeah, right? So. A lot of the things that you do helps the entire site. If you speed up one page, technically you're speeding up the entire website because you have to go through the header and should, yeah. all the code and everything like that to make that website faster. So you're helping the entire website. Mm -hmm. And if you're updating content on a regular basis, that's helping the entire website. Google will keep coming back and crawling the website. If you're getting links to one page, that helps the entire website because that's one more link to your domain name right. from whatever site that is. It's going to move the whole site forward. Now, if some keywords aren't moving, it's because those keywords are more competitive than others. Right. You still it doesn't need to focus on that. But I, I agree with you 100%. That's kind of why I asked the question is that, uh, I wanted you to right. tell me that no, was I right. Yeah, no, um, because I think too, it comes back to the, this topic that we always talk about is look at the long-term strategy, look at improving your, your value to your client. And a lot of times people just want to jump to that bottom of the funnel. It's like, well, I sell this type of you widgets, know, whatever widget <laughs> I want to rank number one for best, whatever widget. And that's the only keyword I care about. Right. <laughs> but again, that you d you're not doing anything to prove to Google that you're providing value and that you're essentially trying to prove to Google that whoever they have at the top of the search results, Google, you're wrong and you need to replace that position with my website. Right. That's what you're trying to do. And how can you possibly do that if you don't go above and beyond and like you said, rank for all these other related keywords, drive that related traffic. Like you said, get links from relevant websites that actually have traffic, that have users that are clicking and coming back to your website, all these things. And then Google maybe give you a shot to show up at, at the top of the results because you're trying to, again, it's a zero sum game when it comes to SEO. First page. One person can rank <laughs> on right. position one and you're trying to tell Google that I want to rank there and the person who's there should not be there. Right. Now, it's not, you don't jump from page three to the first spot. That's one good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Google doesn't make it that easy. It's going to go to page two. It's going to go to page one, hopefully. And right? it's, not a, yeah. uh, it's not a ladder, right? You can't, it's not, well, I was in position nine and then I did better. So now I'm in eight. So I right. can never go back below right. eight. That's not what happens either. It's go, you're going to go to four and then you're going to go down to 14. Stuck on page two. Right. right. It's, it's not a straight path. So any other metrics that we need to touch on? I love, you know, like I said, the the different mindset of folks that are worried about a particular keyword. They do the same thing with AdWords as well. I just need to show up for this keyword. As long as we rank for this keyword, mm -hmm. as long as we advertise the number one position, we're going to be okay. That doesn't work either, right? It's the mm -hmm. same exact thing in SEO. You need to show up for related keywords. You need to show up for everything else. You got to let Google know that you have the best best click-through rate if it was an AdWords campaign. Similarly, you want to have the best click-through rates if it was an organic campaign. Once you know how to do one, mm -hmm. you can understand how Google works. Mm -hmm. And people used to think that the, the title tag and the meta description didn't matter in AdWords. The fact of the matter is the same crawler that checks that page for right. quality score as it does for SEO. So if you have H1 tag in an AdWords, you're probably going to get better quality score because they know what keywords you're bidding on, so they see it. Now, let's make sure that people... You know, understand that just because you buy AdWords, it doesn't influence your search ranking rankings. Right. That's a, There's a myth theory there too. But yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> it does not influence what you do in AdWords. It has nothing to do with how Google ranks you on SEO. Just an FYI, because mm -hmm. they think if I if I buy my way up there, 
Yeah. Um, aside from the fact of just like you said, that the same theories apply in the fact of uh, bettering your user experience. So the same tactics that would make for a great landing page would also make for a great landing page for SEO, right? The, the SEO page. Obviously, you may need some more content. Right. Um, but the same ideas still apply in terms of what they're checking. You should be thinking about the title tag and then meta description, the H1, and mm -hmm. make, making sure that the page still loads fast. It's mobile optimized. Right. You know, all of those things are extremely important because it's not about Google. It's about the user at the end of the day. If right. you do a good job on that, you're already passing the test on everything else. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, should we go into any other metrics that matters for, you know, our audience, right? Uh, I mean, what do you got? I think that I, I think that's um, kind of what I would recommend is the main metric is revenue. Uh, whatever leads to revenue for your organization, if that's leads, quality leads, right. whatever that is, if it's e-commerce and it's sales, average order size, whatever, all those sorts of things, start with that. Um, how do you get to that? Then that's where you look at, okay, it's traffic via organic search because that's what we're talking about here in terms of SEO. Uh, then you look at, like you said, before you get to that, you can look at the number of impressions in your, uh, you know, actual uh, Google search console. Look at the impressions, look at your click-through rate, look at your average position. How do we actually improve that? So you can start tweaking those, those, so those sorts of things. Before you even get to that, if you're not on page one, then that's where you have to look at keyword rankings. I would use a third-party tool. Uh, we have our own tool that we developed called ClickX uh, that allows people to track that in real time. Uh, so that would that would, you'd be able to kind of see something like that. So, but again, there's a lot of factors in determining where something's going to rank, who's actually searching. It's one thing that people forget about too is that Google personalizes the search results. Right. So, depending it, on your location, <laughs> but depending on your search, search history, history, exactly everything. Yeah. yeah. So, it's I can see that if you're a marketer and you're just trying to get into SEO, or you're uh, a company that's working with an agency, you can see that it would be frustrating because. Here we are kind of talking in circles and saying, well, here's the metric keyword ranking. But, uh, you know, keyword ranking doesn't really matter because this is <laughs> ranking right. different for you than me. But it, it's all true. It's complex. That's the whole, the reality of it is it's very complex. So there's not one metric that you can track. Uh, and, you know, even out of all the metrics you can track, you can only, you know, you want to, if you, if they say there's 10 metrics to track, you can only count on, if you're eight out of 10, then you're doing good because, Right. It's like you're never going to get a perfect scenario. Right. And, and the reason why I asked that is a lot of people are worried about, hey, I'm spending too much money and I'm not getting the results. And I think what we usually do is we want to look at the lifetime value of that customer mm -hmm. and figure out what is my customer acquisition cost and how much of that do I spend on search and how many leads do I need per month and work on that entire mathematic equation. Correct. Right. Yeah. So if you have $5,000 that you get from lifetime value and it costs you $500 or whatever to get. So now how many leads do I need from organic search to give me the ROI that I'm looking right. for? And then if you say that I need to generate a hundred leads a month, hypothetically, then you need to track that metric saying, Hey, organic traffic, 1000, can I get this right? What's my conversion rate need to be and build that dashboard accordingly. So you're not worried about keyword ranking from content creation and the right. cost and yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds really simple when you put it that way. Right. Um, I, that is true though. I mean, you look at how much your client's worth to right. you and how much you spend to acquire that client, um, before you even get to that, that's where all these other metrics. And I think that's probably the biggest, uh, pitfall that people have. Um, is you're tracking is the wrong things. Yeah. Before you even get to that, you give up or you change companies or you change strategies because you did a little bit of these things and you had these little metrics like, uh, page authority, authority or page, your focus on page yes. rank. Like maybe you're worried about your Alexa rank. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and I've gotten that too. Um, whatever it is, you're looking at that and trying to manipulate those stats and not looking at the bigger picture. Right. And then that's where, like you said, you spend all this time and energy and you didn't get anything in return. So then you just throw that all out and say, SEO doesn't work in my industry, doesn't work for my company. I've tried it, wasted my money. It doesn't work. Um, it's not it's not going to be easy. That's the whole point. If it was easy, everyone would be at the top of the search results, right? And the fact that there are millions of results and there's only 10 people for whatever that search term is on the top and people are paying big dollars to be at the top of that top in terms of the paid ads, 
Um, you got to look at how Google makes their money and what they do, what they offer. They offer a service that shows a user maybe even before they knew what they were searching for. They're showing them the content that they're looking for. Uh, so how do you how do you take that and manipulate it essentially in your favor? Uh, you can't cheat the system anymore. You have to truly become valuable and improve your process, your product, your website, everything about your company. You do that and you structure it in a way that makes sense. That's what SEO is. It's optimizing your solution for search engines. It's not tricking it and adding keywords and improving your Alexa rank or your domain. Keyword authority. entity. Exactly. <laughs> it's, that's not what it is. It's, it's literally improving every aspect of your website in order to provide a better user experience for both search engines and users. Right. Um, is it fair to say that SEO is war and they're... Or winners and losers. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's everyone. No one. There's no participation trophies. Uh, there's only, you know. And, I and mean, the, for every and search, the, there's only one. And and the reason is we, you know, you see the celebration when we actually break the first page. It's, yeah. it's like you yeah. know how hard that was. That was not. It wasn't easy. It was meant to be. It could have taken years, months. I don't know. Mm. It's not overnight, and everybody knows it because they put a lot of time and effort into making that. It's a team effort, and it's not over. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So, well. Did you have anything else to add? No, that's it. All right. Thanks a lot for tuning in. As always, uh, your questions are welcome. Uh, email us at uh, growthmarketers at oneims.com and we'll see you on the next episode.